Welcome to the Ignited Recovery Podcast, a new way forward for anyone looking for answers but feeling left out. If you've been searching for empowerment, triumph, and purpose, you've found them right here. You won't hear the same solutions and you're not going to have any excuses to fall back on because Ignited Recovery allows heroes to rise and become their best selves. I'm Dr. Adi Jaffe, and I can't wait to be your guide on this journey. Are you ready to become an Ignited Hero? Hello, everybody, and welcome to this episode of the Ignited Recovery Podcast. I'm Adi Jaffe, and I'm so happy to be here with you this Friday. Um, This episode is going to be a little bit more like a rant, so I'll apologize in advance for that, but I think it's going to be good for us because, you know, I was just thinking to myself, you know, all right, everybody's heard me share or say something along the lines of, you know, never, never, never give up, you know, the Winston Churchill quote, or one of these other stories that where I talk about the concept of failure actually just being part of success and being something you're going to have to go through anyway on your way to doing well. And then it dawned on me this morning as I was writing myself in my journal, like, what does it even mean to quit in life, right? What would it mean to actually quit on success totally? I mean, that saying says, never, never, never give up. And that, you know, Winston Churchill came up with that in World War II. And that was around the concept of resisting um, the attack from Germany, from the Third Reich. And I get it in that context, right? Never give up in the fight, keep fighting. But what does it mean in life to actually quit on success? It would be like giving up on the concept of being happy to the point where you're now just resigned to being unhappy all the time for the rest of your life. And I got to tell you, I don't even really know what that means. I don't know that that's feasible for people, that that's possible. I mean, look, obviously a lot of people, maybe some of you listening right now, struggle with depression and anxiety and other ongoing mental health struggles that kind of go along, you know, and and fit in that category. I've had some of those struggles myself. Sometimes that can make you feel hopeless. But even then, for myself and most of the people that I know, as they go through it, there's a desire or an attempt or a wish to get out of it because it feels so terrible. So I don't even know that quitting per se is actually an option, right? Like just waking up in the morning and saying, I'm done, not gonna try anything to feel better, I'm just gonna kinda stay stuck in this place. I think it's one of those things that pisses me off so much around addiction for instance, just like when people say that addicts don't want to get better, that they're in denial. I totally disagree. I mean, I think a lot of times addicts, and I'm putting that in quotation marks, air quotes that you can't really see, but they might not want to quit because they think they can't fathom what their life would look like without it. They think it'll be worse, but they do want to get better. They want happiness. They want satisfaction. They want connection and all those things. So as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, okay, well, if quitting is not really an option because you're never going to just be able to say, I mean, and I guess that's the end point of suicide is when people fully quit in that way. Uh, and, you know, if that is something that you're struggling with, we'll have a, a number for the helpline, the suicide prevention hotline here. Um, but what else are you going to do if you're not going to fully quit? What else is there? And then in my mind, I split things into essentially two camps of people, the people who don't have the motivation and desire to really put forward the effort, like they want to get better but they don't have the motivation to do the work. And some of you might be listening to this right now, but if you are, you're probably here because somebody else made you listen, right? Um, Because somebody told you, hey, you should really listen to this podcast. This guy is great and I think you like his message or maybe you just stumbled upon this from a guest we had or something like that. You probably didn't go out and seek it for yourself because that's motivation alone, right? To do something to make yourself better. And then there are the people who wanna get better. They feel like they have the motivation, they have the desire, but they don't have the tools. Um, And these are people that I love serving because if you want to get better, if you know that there's something more out there for you, you just don't know what that looks like and and what to do specifically, then there is a shit ton of tools, right? Um, There are tools from from here to the moon or maybe Israel and back, if that's a thing. I don't think it's a thing, but you know, I just made it one. Um, In terms of little elements, we'll talk about some of those here moving forward, but you know, the specific things that you can take out of your life or change or or put into your life or adjust, there are a lot of options. And I love helping people who are motivated in that way because then it's it's kind of almost like an easy game of trying to fit things. I don't know if you've checked out the Abstinence Smith book or the free online workshop that I offer at ignitedrecovery.com or anything else that I do, but what people are looking for is tools. They're looking for specific ways 
that they can adjust what's happening in their life to make them better. They have the motivation to employ those tools and put them forward, and it's really, really nice. Even the relationship course that Sophie and I have, right? It's all about people who wanna make their life better and just don't really know what tools to use. So then it's a little bit about teaching and coaching them about using those tools. But within that group, there's another category of people, um, and those are the people who wanna get better. They might have the motivation to do it, but they actually don't think that it's possible or see how it could even happen. Um, so this gets hard, right? Because it gets to this core idea of core belief and, and how do you change something you don't think is changeable? And that's huge. And if you didn't listen to last week's episode where I talk about my analogy of um, these limiting beliefs, please, please go back and check it out because I talk a lot about belief there. Um, and for that crowd, uh, I think that the first thing you really have to work on is is that belief and so i really feel for this crowd because i know for a fact that i was there for decades probably well probably for at least a decade of my life for 15 years of my life i was stuck there um and it was really holding me back from experiencing any measure of success in my life there were so many things in my life that just made me feel like you know what i'm screwed my parents told me i'm a loser um, i never follow through with anything i have this adhd that is fucking me over, uh, I'm now a drug addict. Uh, you heard me all talk about what it was like in the past when I got arrested and I had a daily $300, $400 meth habit uh, and all those parts of my story. And if you've listened to a lot of this stuff, you realize or you remember that one of the things I talk about is that back then, you know, 18, 20 years ago in my life, before I'd quit, nobody would have imagined that I would ever be doing what I'm doing right now. Like literally recording a podcast to help people with addiction or meet with people one-on-one -on -one to help them or do the articles and the courses or doing research on addiction to help make people's lives better. Nobody thought this would ever be a reality. They literally, it was not part of their wildest imagination. And why is really simple. I know why people didn't expect any of that from me and that's because I'd never done anything like that in my life. I'd never shown initiative. I never went out of my way to help people, let alone hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people, uh, or make it a mission to make the world a better place. That was not the way I was functioning in the world. In fact, I lived a life that on the outside looked to a lot of people like it was actually just totally selfish because I did things that looked to other people like they only benefited me or only focused on my needs. Now, in reality, when I know in retrospect is that I was actually constantly trying to defend myself from anxiety and low self-esteem and having to feel any feelings or pay attention to what's going on at all in my head and outside of my life. So it was kind of selfish because it was protecting me, but it wasn't like only fully hedonistic, like maybe a lot of other people thought that it was. Now, back then, as I was trying to get my life together, the goals were simple. I mean, if you remember after the arrest, um, I wasn't giving up my old life just because I wanted to. But when somebody was telling me that I might face 13 to 18 years in prison, I didn't wanna to go to prison for 13 to 18 years. So I said, okay, well, how do we make that better? And the answer was, go to rehab. As you guys remember, I talk about it, going to rehab was not really to get sober at first for me. It was about getting out of jail or prison for 18 years. So I said, okay, well, let's go to rehab. Um, and so that I just did the next thing that was in front of me. Now, the problem was I fucked up. I got kicked out of rehab for using, uh, and that's when I first went, oh shit, this is actually a lot more serious than I thought. I have to pay attention to, uh, to what I'm doing here, or I might actually end up in prison for all those years. So then when I went to the second treatment option, I did what they asked of me, and I did it regularly and as well as I could because I wanted to avoid, and I realized after the first treatment center what happened if I didn't. Now, yes, that was a very 12-step based system, just like the first rehab I went to, but the system didn't change. It wasn't that the, the place changed or what they taught us was different. It was the same exact thing. It just said I now accepted it because I knew I needed to go through something. I need to go through a transformation of some sort. I needed to complete a program in order to not, ending up, to not end up in prison for decades. So the mo motivation was there, but just was not, to, I didn't do it because I wanted to end up where I am right now. I didn't go to that second treatment center because I wanted a PhD. I didn't get into a treatment center because I wanted to meet my wife and have this family and, and all this impact and write a book. That's not it. There's no motivation to help hundreds and thousands of people or a million people as I'm trying to do with Ignited Recovery. 
The motivation was how do I make my life incrementally better than it was in this moment? I am facing 18 years in prison. How do I make sure that I face less time in prison? I finished this thing. Okay. Now, I'm not necessarily going to say that I'm lucky because look, I tried a bunch of things that didn't work along with the things that did work. That's what I mean by part of not quitting in life. It's about continuing to try because you remember that there is no other option, right? When the first rehab didn't work, I guess I could have just said, well, fuck it, I'll go to prison for 18 years. But that was so painful, I needed to do something else to change. And you know you, that, um, that saying, the definition of insanity is to try the same thing over and over and expect different results. Well, I was trying different things, not the same thing over and over and getting different results. This one stint in rehab didn't work out. Okay, let's retool a little bit, try something a little bit differently. Some of them worked, obviously, and some of them did not work. The effort was just on trying more and more and newer and newer approaches and tools because at the time I felt like I had no option. I just had to try to find something. Now, maybe it didn't get me from 18 years to a year like it actually did, but even going from 18 years to five would have been better, right? I kept, there's a story I tell last time uh, about a woman who just listening to one of the talks we did in the course decided to turn herself in because she finally realized that whatever time she's facing in jail is better than living the life on the run on the outside. So I was kind of in that same place. I just did the next thing that was in front of me. I kept trying until gradually I found more and more things that were for me and eventually I created a system out of them. I made this system of a way of life, this ignited recovery thing is kind of the system that I live by myself. Now, just to be clear, I wasn't perfect in that second rehab. I got in trouble there too, but I didn't use, so I didn't get kicked out for using. You know. I invited ex-using partners and ex-girlfriends to parties even though they were still active users and I got in a lot of trouble for that. But I did things well enough to not get kicked out. And then I gradually kept finding more and more little options, little tools, little things that helped me. Like three months into that place, I, find, I finally remembered that I like watching movies and reading books again. Now that might sound really simple to you but I hadn't done that in years. And so that helped me spend more time and, and clear my head and feel better about how everything was going. Now, the reason I think this is a really important concept for everybody to listen right now is that if you agree that quitting is not an option, that you want to get better, then you know you don't like life the way it is right now and you want more out of it. You want new things. You might not even know what they are, but you want it to be better. And the way I see it, there's really only one path forward and that is look around Try to select the best next option you can fathom right now. Now you might have limitations in your life. You might have things you can or can't afford, time that you can or can't do. I mean, that's why I wrote the Absent Smith book was I wanted to offer people things not just at, at, at you know $500 an hour, which is what it costs to see me one-on-one, -on -one, but at like $8 so you can still get what I'm giving. You have limitations, that's okay. Within those limitations, Go do something free. If you can't afford the $8 book, free or find something that costs a dollar that you put in a, in, a, you know, in a hat, whatever it is, try that. Now, I'm not telling you that if you try it once and it doesn't work, you should give it up because sometimes it takes a few tries. Sometimes the challenge of growth is about getting up against that edge and pushing through, pushing through the discomfort, pushing through the change, pushing through the pain. That's good for us sometimes, right? If you work out, if you push yourself harder, your body will adjust. That's how we get better. It's the same in life. But try it. Keep trying these things and, and give it your all until you feel like you're giving it your best and you, you're doing as good a job as you can at that thing, at that approach, at that tool. Now, if it's giving you what you want, then you're already doing incrementally better. And then all you need to do is look for the next thing, the next tool in life that will potentially make things even a little bit better than they are then. But now if that was a failure, it didn't work and one of the things I believe in is that just like the definition of insanity is trying the same thing over and over and expecting different results, that is also useful for helpful tools. You tried something long enough that you really feel like you're doing it at the best level that you can and it's not delivering what you needed to deliver, stop trying it. Go to something else. Don't just keep banging your head against the wall expecting the wall to move at some point. Go to another method. Go to another tool. Go to another way of looking at things, another philosophy, another friend, another support structure. Because 
if you're sitting there repeatedly and then continuing to fail at the exact same tool, it can actually lead to the opposite of the success you're looking for. It can lead to the hopelessness and helplessness you're trying to avoid in the first place. You've all felt this before at some point if you're listening right now. You've all had this voice in your head, I can never get this. I'll never be able to do this right. I'll never get better. But I want to point out the only thing you're actually realizing in the moment is that that tool you're trying right now is not helping you at that moment. So you won't be able to employ that specific technique. Let's say you start about CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, or meditation, or biofeedback, or a specific medication, or changing your schedule, or a specific way of exercising, or changing your nutrition and dietary habits. You might have tried that specific thing for long enough to really give it a try, and it didn't work. The failure is a lot of people believe that because they didn't succeed in a specific task, because a specific technique didn't make their life better, that means there's something wrong with them, and that they'll never get better, and that is hardly ever true. What's true in reality is maybe that's just you need a different technique. You might need something else to get you started, something else to get you where you're trying to go. And you know, what I tell a lot of professionals that I work with is when I help them guide uh, their path with some of their difficult clients, one of the things I always tell them is make sure that the person you're working with understands that there are dozens and dozens of options to try, that you have a lot of tools for them. Our jobs as helpers are to, is to get as big a toolkit as possible so we can try to help people kind of find their way to the right tool. Now, if you really wanna do a great job, lay it out for them. Tell them, hey, I've got this little roadmap. And I'm gonna give you, by the way, a free roadmap that we use um, within, a, you know, within this so you guys can go get that off the link. But, Just tell them, hey, we're gonna try this thing first. Let's say you're gonna try a specific medication first. You're gonna say, okay, we're gonna try this medication along with cognitive behavioral therapy. And then if that is not enough, we're gonna try some meditation and mindfulness. But we also have a list of 15 other medications we can try down the line. So we're gonna give that time. And then we have a bunch of different types of meditation and we're gonna try to add yoga uh, initially for exercise, but then we have a few different options for exercise on top of that if that doesn't work or if you want more. We have all these different things. We're going to line them up for you so you have a roadmap, a path in front of you. If this technique didn't work, it's all good. We've got 40 other techniques to try. We've got a long road ahead of us of tools. If you set it up for them and don't tell them, hey, it's all about this. If this thing doesn't work, if this medication doesn't work, if this therapy, if my approach doesn't work for you, then you're screwed. Then you're just making the situation worse for your clients. Now... For some of you who are listening, this sounds exactly like what you've been looking for your whole life, and that's awesome. But for others, it sounds like a freaking disaster, like holy shit. I just have to keep trying and trying new things and just keep failing and getting up and trying new things. And I wanna get you back to the starting point where we had, right? Like what's the other option? Just stop, just wake up every morning and just accept that you will never be happy again or that you'll never feel better. Just fail and say, I'm, I'm gonna feel like shit now and I'm gonna feel like shit tomorrow and I'll feel like shit for the rest of my life? I mean, I don't, again, I don't really understand how anybody would do that on an ongoing basis. That sounds far more terrible than continuing to try new things. And I would argue that nobody listening to this right now can even understand what that would mean for you for the rest of your life. So, It might be debilitating and it might be hard. It might be excruciating to try continuing techniques and to say to yourself, oh, that didn't work. I'll try the next one. Or that one worked a tiny bit. I'll try another one. But here's the experience that I've had and that I've seen with a lot of my clients and I want to make sure that you are clear on this. As soon as you change your belief from I'm a failure and I'm never going to be able to make this work to I've had a really hard time making it work up to now and I just need to find the right tools for myself, you will already feel a little bit better. And then... If you add to that trying some actual techniques, you don't rest on your laurels because that'll die pretty quickly. But if you actually try some techniques that are evidence-based and are supportive of your needs and work towards your goals, you're gonna get a little bit better again. And then you're gonna get a little more motivation, a little more hope, and then all that ends up happening is you start gradually building up your confidence and start to be able to feel better. And then you get even better at being able to choose the next tools because you say, yeah, this type of tool hasn't really worked well for me. I'm gonna choose from this category, right? Like. I like meditation, let me try a few different ones and see which one is best. I like this version of exercise, not this version of exercise. I like morning rituals or evening rituals, whatever works for you, whatever tools and approaches are out there, you're gonna be better at selecting them because you're gonna start being able to better listen to your internal voice because you're not running away from pain anymore, you're running towards help. 
And that's when the magic really happens because then you dissociate yourself completely from the notion that you're never gonna be able to do anything and you actually start just picking the tools that will make you better. Now, look, this isn't necessarily the, the kind of magic bullet attempt that people want, but what I've found is that step by step, minute by minute, day by day, week by week, and month by month, you keep creating adjustment and then you end up exactly what we're talking about in terms of my experience and the experience of so many of the clients that I've worked with before, the overall trajectory of your entire life and how you feel about yourself and how other people see you and how you relate to them completely changes. Because as those successes build up, as you remove the consequences of one thing and improve a little bit of relationship here and then you, 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 know, you start talking to your family in a way that you never had before and you start doing better at work, Next thing you know, you're running a company or you manage something or you're, you're doing better than you ever thought before. Like 20 years ago, I was a loser looking at 18 years in prison and now I've run my own company and I be, I'm able to impact hundreds of lives a week, if not thousands a week. As you do this, you will end up creating such massive change that 10, 15, 20 years from now, you will literally not be able to recognize or identify with the life you have right now okay like i said i know this was going to be a little bit more of a rant so um if you like the kind of stuff that you heard here please uh you know screenshot this tag somebody who would love it too so they can start listening to it and help their life again if you want the approach like i said we're going to put some resources here the book um, the free online workshop and that free roadmap that i was talking about um, and i want to give you a sense of how you can dig your way out of this but i want you to remember Always quitting is not really an option. We're all heading to the same endpoint. We're all gonna end up in the exact same place. We all know what it is. We don't wanna get there. We don't wanna hurry up. So on the way, we've gotta keep trying to make our life as good as it can be. And all I urge you is to just keep looking for tools. All right? Okay, thank you so much for listening. I hope this was helpful for you. I hope you have a great, great rest of your day and the weekend, and I will see you next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the Ignited Heroes Recovery Podcast. I really hope you found the information here useful and that we'll see you back here next week. And look, I want to make sure that this podcast is the most useful it can be for you. So please let me know by emailing info at ignited.com if there are any specific topics or questions you'd like to have addressed. As usual, if you like this episode, I would love for you to leave us a five-star review and rating. Thanks and see you next week.